Sunday morning when we have begun. Amen. Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for this day for which we have created, Lord God. Father, I'm you right now, God, to begin to come into this place, that you saturate this place like never before, Father. Yes, I'm asking you right now, God, let there be a transformation inside of us on, on today, Father God. Inside and outside, Lord God. Change our mindset, Lord God, and how we think about things, Lord God, and how we think about you, Lord God. And teach us how to even have even more trust you, even with the things that we may go through, Father. Father, I'm asking you right now, Lord God, that you would do a new thing within this house, Father. God, something supernaturally that we have not yet seen for, Father. I'm asking you right now to begin to take over the worship service on today, oh God, and let us begin who's beside us, who's behind us, oh God, and allow us to deliver onto you, oh God. Deal with the, 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 deal with the matters of our hearts, Lord God. I'm asking you right now to take out the old heart and give us the new heart, Lord God. Amen. I ask you right now, God, to begin to change anything within us that's not like you, Father, God, that we can be more like you, Father, when we, and when we encounter to other people, Father, that they see the light that shines with that, that shines within them, Father, and that that, that they rubbed up and resonate with them as well, Lord. I'm asking right now for a first frame and first fire on today, like never before, Father. I'm even praying right now for a pack of drawer right now, Father, as she gets ready to come forth with the word through Amen. the third, Father. Let there be a first fire that work out of her, Lord God, like never before. Something new, something fresh, Father. Even for those that out with in the congregation, those that even in the e-camp of the Father, that we will leave out of here not the same way as we have came in, Lord. I thank you right now, God, what you didn't ready to do for such a time as this or today, Father. I thank you right now for the new, for the new, for the new that's getting ready to take place like never before, Father. We give your name our honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, so every month uh, we do communion, um, and our word tells us that and as often as we do this, we remember the Lord and his death. Amen. Um, and so if you are at home, you're watching us at home, we want to encourage you to go ahead and get your cracker, your bread, um, and some juice or water, whatever um, element you may have, <clears throat> so that we can remember what God did for us. Amen? Amen. And the sacrifice of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So if you have your cracker or your bread, uh, for those of you who are at home, I'm going to give everybody a couple seconds. We have our cups here, so we have to undo them. Amen. Amen. We take our, our element in our hand, and we remember that this is symbolic of the body of Christ that was broken for us. Amen? Amen. So I want to go ahead and encourage you to go ahead and take and eat of that. Amen? Amen. And then if you have your cup or your juice, this element is symbolic of the blood that was shed for us. Amen? Amen. And even as we take of it, we remember his blood um, that was shed for us. Amen? In his death. Father, we thank you so much for your sacrifice. God, we thank you for the greatest gift to this world, which is Jesus. God, we thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And your word says, and as often as we do this, we remember you and your death and your sacrifice for us. And so, God, we don't take it for granted. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for what you've done for us, God. And we remember and we rejoice, Father God, that we are able to take this bread and this juice, God, and remember what you did for us, the greatest sacrifice, the greatest gift we could ever have. In Jesus' name we pray, we thank you, and we ask you to continue to have your way in this service. Amen. 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 Let's worship. Amen.
Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, as we kind of prepare, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a preview of the worship today. So Amen. the songs that we're singing, the first one is just reminding us of where we are. We are in the house of the Lord. Amen. And in the house of the Lord, there is joy. We can praise. We don't have to be self-conscious. We can, you know, shout. We can run. We can dance because we are in his house. Amen. We have access to him. We are coming with our cups turned up, expecting uh, a new a, a new mercy, a new grace, a new word. So we are coming with an expectation. So we're going to celebrate because we are in his house today. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to sing about the deep crying out. We've been talking about advancement. We've been talking about kind of pushing to the next level. And sometimes when we get into those deeps, we still have to cry out to God because that's where Amen. our source lies. That's where we can, um, who we can rely on, who we can call on because the last one is the goodness of God, that he is so good yeah. because he's our father, because he's our provider, our protector, our healer. We know that his mercy will never fail us. Amen. We know that we can always come to him and rely that he will provide an answer. It may not be the answer we want, <laughs> but he's going to give us an answer. And at well, the end, it's well. going to be because uh, he needs, He deserves the glory. Amen. Amen. So worship with me today if you can. Stand if you can uh, as we kind of join in together in worship. Praise God. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Who has experienced the goodness of God? Yes. Who has a firsthand experience of the goodness of God? Hallelujah.
Commission, recognizing that she is in the process of ordination here at Abundant Life Worship Center. Uh, and this is her pursuit of office of prophet and pastor. Yes. Now you gotta come over and get yourself. Somebody give it to us. Somebody give me a picture. <laughs> God is good. That last song we was we was worshiping and and uh, I just began to weep because I was reminded of just how sometimes we just got to say, Lord, I thank you even for the small victories. I remember the last year for some reason we was fighting every Sunday because Facebook was blocking us and it would cut off our life. And so I and and, and I was looking today and it's, it just hit me. Say. We ain't had that problem in a minute. So, you know, it's like, Lord, thank you for every victory there is. Amen. Those that are um, online, the, the offering information is pinned in the comment. For those in here, there's a basket here and also the information on the screen. So I'm going to pray for the offering. God, we thank you because you are just so, so good. We thank you today, Father, for providing for us, for provision. Because uh, we understand if you don't give it to us, then we won't have. And so, Father, we thank you for sustaining us. Now, we ask that you would give us wisdom on how to steward the funds that you give us to steward them well, um, to bring the, an uplift of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we've been talking about advancement. Y'all gonna probably get tired of talking like, we know the definition, we're gonna be able to say it forward, backwards, upside, whatever. But that's okay, this is what the Lord wants us to go through. And so I'm gonna give you the definition, I'm gonna use the definition of advancement that talks about development or improvement, right? And so God is calling for us to allow him to improve our mindsets, to, to change how we think. So what is a mindset? Well, a mindset is that established sets of attitudes that, that are held by somebody. So our mindset is a set of beliefs. Um, these are the things that shape us. This is the things that, that, that how we make sense of the world. Uh, this, this mindset is how we show up in relationships, um, how we see and view God, even how we view and see ourselves. So if the mindset has been set and formed by trauma, then guess what's going to happen? We're going to have wrong input. We're gonna, uh, it's going to be things based on our experiences. We're going to have a mindset that leads us to failure or to struggle even when we want success. Let me say that again. See, when our mindsets are based and are built on our traumas, what happens is we already are kind of set up for a losing battle. And, and, and it's, not that, it's not that many of us are saying, I don't want to win. We just have not figured out how because we're using the wrong mindset. And so Paul, of our call for advancement for God requires us to give him access to us to establish uh, our beliefs about ourselves, him, and others, and to allow him to, to do the improvement. That's what it said. To improve what needs to be improved and develop what needs to be developed. And excavate in some places. He needs to dig totally out. And, and to improve it, he got to dig out because he ain't, he ain't building up on, on a, a, shout, a, a faulty foundation. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's going to teach us, and that's what he wants to do today. So um, I want to start by talking about some of the ways why of what, this is how the Lord brought it to me. He, he woke me up and this is kind of how he took me. He said, first of all, he said, let's talk about the wandering experience. 
Um, Pastor Johnson talked about this a little bit in her message. So I'm going to start with Numbers 14, 26 through 30. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. <clears throat> it says, Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long my, must I put up with this wicked community and its complaints about me? He had complaints. That's the first time he said Yes, I have heard the complaints. That's the second time he said. The Israels are making against me. Now tell them this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Oh, my Lord. You will all drop dead in the wilderness. Hello? Because you complain. That's the third time. Against me, every one of you who is 20 years or older and was included in the registry will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephthah, and Joshua, son of Nun. I know y'all probably be just like, okay, we just need to leave in because like, we ain't got no help. No, 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 no. You got some help. You got some help. Let me take this out. This going to drive me crazy. You got some help. You got some help. But I just want you to, I want to set a foundation so we can see. First of all, wandering. Wandering means you keep going to, you're wandering around, and in this case, they kept circling, so they kept revisiting the same places. God is saying sometimes we keep revisiting the same places, but we're getting no new results. So as the people were wandering, they continued to keep tracing over and retracing and retracking over the same path they had already covered. And when we don't deal with our complaining, we will find ourselves covering the same paths and delaying our access to promise. Amen. Sometimes we're going over the same behaviors or the same responses, the same triggers, but we don't get any new results. Why? Because our mindset is, 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 is one of complaining that has resulted, and it results rather in us wandering. Let me say that again. See, the complaining starts based on what kind of mindset. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going, to, I'm going to go over five mindsets. But God said what happens is that mindset leads you to complain about God. Because he said, I hear your complaints against me. We can be complaining against people, but if God sent them, guess what? Because they was complaining against Moses, but Moses didn't decide to do this. Moses did not want to do this, if anybody really remember the scripture. Moses was like, uh, can I give you 99 and 100 it, it, to the reasons why I don't need to do this job? But God was like, no, I picked you. But the people complained and complained and complained, and God finally said, I've had enough of your complaining. Because some of them, he said, going to die in the wilderness. Can I help somebody today? Let me help you. An unchanged mindset is going to lead some of us to experience death. Death of purpose, death of promise, death of destiny. I don't know about you, but I ain't trying to die on, and, and wander. I ain't trying to do all that. When it's my time to leave this world naturally, then that's when I'm going to leave this world naturally. But I, don't want, I want to leave here poured out. I want to leave here everything that God told me to do done. And I want to I want to get some extras. That's just you know my husband said I'm over a tree cheaper. So if he told me to do ten, I'm trying to do twelve. So you know I'm like, well, can you give me two more? I done finished the ten. Give me two more as much as I can plan. I still like, okay, Lord, I'm on tap. Give me two more because I want to please you. I want to do all that you said I could do. Yes. And so if we don't allow God to change our mindset, we're going to continue to complain, even when God is walking us into what we ask for. Because remember, the people, they were begging, Lord, bring us out of bondage, get us out of Egypt. And then they complained after he bought them out. They was like, why you bring us out here, Moses, to die? So we sometimes, we complain. We ask God to help us, and then we complain about how he helped. Mm -hmm. I ain't looking at no one. Amen. <laughs> See, so complaining results from these different kinds of mindset. And it leads us to wandering, and if we aren't careful, we can find ourselves missing out on our promises. Yeah. So before I talk about these five types of mindsets, with again, this list is not exhaustive. This is just the five God gave me. And you know how he'd do, if he want me to do, he'd be telling me, okay, give him five more. I'd be like, okay. So y'all don't be surprised if the next time I preach, I'd be like, okay, the Lord gave me some more. But for right now, these are the five he told me to talk about. But as I go into this message, there's two things that, two phrases that we're going to touch on in each of these mindsets. The first one is value your time. Say that, value, value your time. Value your time. In this season, we're going to need to examine every conversation, every thought, everything that's using our time to determine if it's a good use of our time. Right. Amen. See, in other words, no more complaining or grumbling because um, it's going to lead to us wandering. 
Don't waste time with complaints like if someone ticked you off, you fill in the blank because it's a whole other thing. Your emotional response comes from one of these types of mindsets and which we're going to discuss shortly. You could spend your energy showing, uh, spending time like, oh, okay, they didn't say this about me. So you're trying to figure this out. You're trying to figure that out. You're going in, and you done wasted a whole day, a month, sometimes weeks. Why? Because you keep replaying that same conversation. It's a waste of time. Amen. It's a waste of time. God does not want you messing with uh, misusing the value of your time because part of what he says is when you put your when you value your time and use your time right he said it's in those places that he will give you intel on how to deal with the stuff anyway Amen. because focus is in the wrong place Amen. he said because when you value your time then you know how to war for yourself say war for yourself war for yourself to war for yourself means that when you understand your assignment on your life you diligently pursue what will allow you to be victorious and go into your promise. Once you value your time, you then have the intel of what you need to fight for, how you need to fight, and you no longer fight useless battles and battles that don't have nothing to do with where you're going. Amen. You will learn, I, I told somebody, I said, this is my season, I'm flowing in the anointing of the block. <laughs> If you're talking crazy and it ain't nothing to do with where I'm going, I'm blocking you. Love you, but I'm blocking you. Because I don't have time for that. Because that will then put me in this place that now I'm wasting time fighting with you or fighting with them. And it's not even worth it. That's not my destiny. Amen. And i got to learn how. And it's okay to war for yourself. So let's look at these different mindsets. Because these are the five kind of mindsets that lead to complaining and wandering. The first one is a rebellious mindset. Rebellious mindset. Isaiah 30 verses 1 and 2 says, What sorrow awaits my rebellious children, says the Lord. You make plans that are contrary to mine. You make alliances not directed by my spirit, thus piling up your sins. For without consulting me, you have gone down to Egypt for help. Now why would you go down to Egypt for help and that's the same place that was in your bondage? Because that's what we do when we're rebellious. We go back to the same place that had us in bondage and be us and using that as our foundation. Anyway, you have put your trust in Pharaoh's protection. So this is what happened. A rebellious mindset is caused by many things. For example, the Lord said that sometimes parental hurts. You, you suffer in, in, in your life sometimes can mask itself to now look like church hurt because it's causing you to see leaders and authority as your parents. That's good. And so what happens is if you had neglected parents, you had to learn how to kind of fend for yourself, fight for yourself, um, you know, do that kind of stuff. Or sometimes you just don't have respect for them. So then you would show up on your job or you would show up in the church and you're giving the poor leader all kind of heck. <laughs> Why? Because of your parents. And then you'll call it church hurt if they tell you to correct something. You'll call it church hurt because they, they made you they made you acknowledge and try to deal with your stuff. Mm. And so you begin to complain or grumble. Uh, you don't want to be corrected or challenged to grow in any kind of way. Uh, and one is that, like the Israelites, they wanted God to pull them out of bondage, but as soon as he did, they rebelled and complained. Mm -hmm. So the person with the rebellious mindset begins to see correction from a leader or authority figure in their jobs as, as abusive or hard. They don't understand me. I, I'm not this kind of person. They, they did say that. And so it all becomes about them and they, and it's not about you acknowledging your need to help. This person tends to look for support from others of their pre pre about their preconceived ideas that they are being wronged. Amen. That's what the scripture said, making alliances not directed by God's spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, sometimes we don't realize how this stuff plays out. Th this morning, let me just pause here for a minute. I'm going to get back to that. This morning, the Lord was just saying, sometimes we want these great revelations in the spirit, but then we don't want to put them in the application. Great revelation with no application is just a good word. Yes. God said it's time for us to just hear, stop hearing a good word. He says it's meaty, but I need you to chew on it, eat it, digest it, and let it become a part of who you are. Yeah. 
Amen. And so I'm trying to break this down so we can see it. Because sometimes we see words and they're like, okay, that ain't me. Okay, let's bring it down to how it shows up. So you can say, ooh, maybe there was a little rebellious part of me. Because, you know, I, me and my mama don't get along. And anytime she say something, my, the vein in my neck start popping. So and well, maybe that's why when pastor say something to me, he say so and so and the vein in my neck start popping. Ooh, maybe I'm seeing pastor like my dad. Maybe I'm seeing pastor like my mom. And I need to now not stop blaming them for my issue, but go, Lord, I got some issues that I need help with. Okay. Instead, say he said, instead of seeking God, they trust in and what they play, they trust in Pharaoh. That which had them in bondage is the first place is where they go to seek help. So we go back. That's what I said. That wandering spirit, you just keep retracing Amen. what you thought worked. And can I help somebody? It ain't working. That's why you're wandering. Amen. So their rebellious spirit and mindset keeps them in this place. I, a writer for this article um, by The Guardian said, to be a rebel is to be an enemy to yourself. Amen. Because you will miss out on the, the benefits of obedience. Yes. So how do we allow God to change our mindset from being a grumbling, from, from being a, uh, from grumbling, that grumbling, uh, rebellious mindset? Well, let's look at how to value your time. Micah 6 and 8 says, He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. See, God wants us to value our time by humbling ourselves in his hand. And in his processes, he has rulership over our lives. It's time for us to not only take, just take your foot right here, just kick your own self off the throne of your heart. Because too many of us are following after false trend me, myself, and I. Well, what did they do for me? I, me, 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 I, me, me, me. When it's always me, I, on your mind, then you have the wrong trinity on the throne. Amen. And so he decides what's right and just. And once we understand, we don't get to determine our own way. We have to follow God. And, and then when we learn how to follow him, he teaches us how to war for ourselves. See, too many times we want and we ask God, Lord, deliver me for something. And we have in our minds, we've been watching too many TV shows, I think. We have in our mind that when God delivers us, we come in out like, woo. Oh, just this wonderful soundtrack behind us and we're walking into this beautiful stuff. Most of the time our deliverance comes out with, whoop, we done tripped, we gotta climb up stuff, we going up the mountain going, wait, this don't feel like deliverance, Lord. He said, yeah, just keep going because where I'm getting you to is on the other side of this. Amen. So we gotta be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm gonna stop rebelling against your hand and your purpose because sometimes God will send a prophet to you Sometimes God can send your child. God will send people and say, hey, sister, brother, maybe you ought to think about how you talk. Maybe you ought to think about how you respond. Maybe you ought to think, and then we, you know, the vein is popping again. How dare they tell me, I done got myself here. I can trust in me. No, you can't. That's why you're wandering. Amen. We can't trust in ourselves. We are wandering. Yeah. So once we value our time, God says, now you got to war for yourself. Now, war for yourself does not mean that you war by yourself. Right. You war with the help of the Lord. So let's get that straight. Because if we start warring by ourselves, for ourselves, we're going to cause war. We're going to cause shipwreck. So this is what we do with the Lord's help. So first of all, he says release control. Romans 13 and 1 says, Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. What? No. Didn't that scripture say that you better follow rules? You don't get to be these rogue folks. Let me just say this for a minute. It's so it's it's so many folks in rebellion are just out here rogue. Somebody hurt you, true or not. Sometimes it's perceived hurt, because I'm not saying everybody was always doing what they were supposed to, but some of it is perceived hurt. And even if people hurt you, that don't mean everybody gonna hurt you. And so we get in these places where we try to keep ourselves from getting hurt and we refuse to release control. Can I help somebody else? You really don't have no control of your life. You really don't. I don't care how well they sound, you know, people give you all these mantras to, you know, I am the, I am the captain of my own ship. That's why you shipwreck. No, you're not. 
You need God. I need God. I'm the first one to tell you. I need God. If God don't tell me what to do, I don't know what to do. And if I try to figure it out, I'm always messing it up. So I be like, Lord, I tried that. That didn't work. Let me back up. Lord, not to you direct me. He'd be like, why didn't you come the first time? Because I was rebellious. I just was hard-headed. I just thought I could do it by myself. I was afraid if I did. I was afraid if I if I waited for you, it wasn't going to come when I wanted. So I did it myself. That's rebellion. I, I, Lord, I was, I, I, I knew you said you was going to give me my promise, but I don't know. It just, I, it, everybody else was dropping me, so I, 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 got, I got strength in myself. That's rebellion. So he said, release control. Heed the, heed the instructions, Proverbs 5 and 12. You will say how I hated discipline. If only I, I had not ignored all the warnings. See, God is saying, look, listen to my instructions. You might not want to hear them, but you're going to regret it if you don't. Amen. You're going to regret it if you try to do this all by yourself. Do it right the first time so you don't have to be um, in here groveling at the, at the altar going, Lord, help me because I done messed this up. I got 99 things wrong with first. I only had one. I was just going to fix the one. I don't know how the one went to 99 because you start trying to fix it. When you start trying to fix it, you just, that's the enemy going, yeah, fix it, fix it. Don't ask Jesus to fix it. You fix it, fix it, fix it. And I'm going to help you fix it. You don't even know he be in your ear. I'm gonna help you. Yeah, we got this. We we got this. No, we get out of my ear. We ain't got this, Lord. I need your help. <laughs> then he said, receive the freedom. Psalms 119.45 says, I will walk in freedom for I have devoted myself to your command. See, don't you know when we trust the Lord? He said, there is freedom there. There is freedom. I can break loose. You can break loose from that rebellious spirit. That try. Because can I tell you something? Even as much as you walk in that rebellion, it ain't comfortable. We don't even understand. That is bondage. And you can feel the chains of it, but you're too stubborn to acknowledge it. Amen. God is saying, receive the freedom that I have for you so you can walk in that freedom. Amen. Is this good, y'all? Yes, yes. The next mindset is an abandoned mindset or an orphan mindset. Psalms 27.10 says, now, now for those that are on the e-campus, you can't see this or even the, the watch the, on YouTube. The, the picture the Lord gave me for the abandoned mindset it's, it was a little rag doll and she dropped on the road and just there, she can't move. She and, and, and think about it, thou can't pick herself up. And so with that orphan mindset, it makes you boneless in a sense. It, yeah. it makes you spiritually boneless. So you can't even get up if you wanted to. Uh, that, that, that abandonment, that orphan spirit, it makes you feel like I'm just out here. I'm going to get run over. I'm on an abandoned road. Can't nobody help me. I ain't got no help. But God said, I'll come and pick you up. But where you are, I'll pick you up. I will pick you up. And so Psalms 27.10 says, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Uh, God wants us to understand that he will take us in. Amen. So what happens when someone has felt abandoned uh, is in this abandoned mindset is this person believes they have to keep themselves safe. So what happens, though, is actually just the opposite. Because you're not keeping yourself safe. You're isolating yourself. You're hiding yourself. And so you hide yourself from good relationships. You even hide yourself or try to hide yourself from God and what God wants to develop. This mindset can have a person overly sensitive to feelings like isolation, loneliness, low self-esteem. The result is the person creates these, and then the person will create these unrealistic expectations in others. So what they do is they say, I'm setting a standard. You ain't finna just come to me any old kind of way. You know, we get a little attitude with it. You ain't coming to me just any old kind of way. I'm setting a standard. God said, it's not a standard. It's actually, it's, it's a cage. You put yourself in this cage and you've already predetermined that everybody's going to abandon you. So you set up these scenarios in your heart and mind that says they're going to abandon me. And so you will actually do what I call self-sabotage. And you'll find yourself either unwilling or unable to trust because you find it too hard. You're always looking and expecting, um, setting things in motion for others to leave. Uh, when the spirit of abandonment overwhelms, it creates issues that, uh, that others are against me. My haters. Everybody hate you. Some people don't even know who you are. 
But this is just how the enemy torments somebody who's dealing with that kind of mindset. They complain about this. Now, now can I just pause and say, I'm reading this because this is how the Lord woke me up and wrote and told it to me. And I was like, Lord, I want to make sure I'm saying this. So let me write it down. He says, they complain about how poor a friendship is or a person is, but often the plant complaint is set up because of their abandonment. They often believe others are out to destroy them. Uh, and in part because they abandon it should make them feel, they have this feeling of, of, worthy, uh, of being unworthy. They have this feeling of being unloved or either disrespected. And so they, the complaints, remember I'm talking about the complaints. So the complaints come and keeps the person focused on what they see in the wilderness instead of trusting that there is God bringing them to the other side Amen. of that thing. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing God said about the spirit of abandonment is you you feel like I'm my best, I'm my only best friend. That's what it makes you oh you you not you you're not a friend like me, because if I'm a friend, I do this, 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 and this. And so you make these unrealistic expectations of friendships with others, and then you set them up for failure because I mean, to be honest, you set these expectations that you actually get mad at God because God don't show up as a God the way you want him to. Ain't that what the Israelites did? It's like, we asked for you to deliver us, and you, you brought us out of here in, in this wilderness. Hmm. What kind of God is that? You're supposed to, you're supposed to be my God, and I, when, you, when I asked for deliverance, I meant I was supposed to come out of freedom, and I needed luxury. I needed to be able to put my feet up and relax. You got me out here uh, waiting on this, waiting on that. We wandering. What, what kind of God is that? That's a complaint. It's that feeling of, I've been abandoned. But it's a complaint, so nobody does good. Sometimes even God is not good enough. Hmm. So how do we allow God to change this kind of mindset of grumbling based on abandonment, abandonment mindset? So first, we want to value your time. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says this. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to take tear, to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. We missed that silent part. But anyway, a time to live, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. God said everything has a time. Even the fact what he is saying is, I want you to understand that's going to be good and bad in every life. Yeah. But what God doesn't want us to do is allow the bad times to become all time. Amen. Yeah. He said there's a time for everything. That little time that you went through, that was the time for it. Now is not the time. Now is the time for the healing. God is saying we got to stop making all of the things that we've gone through our, all, our eternity from now on. You know, for every, every from now on, for the next 40 years, y'all going to keep hearing about how he, the, the, how he done me wrong song. He said, no, it's time to get a new song. It's time to change the tune. We're not, we're not going to do that. No more. We're not going to keep talking about it. Because see, it's one thing to talk about it because you want to heal. It's another thing to talk about it like you're walking around with a trophy. Because some of us be like, yes, I, I, I've, had, I've been so damaged. <laughs> see my trophy. No, this ain't no trophy. That ain't nothing to be honored about. Give it to the Lord and let him heal it. And I'm not being funny. I'm not trying to be, you know, make light of it. But we got to stop being our own worst enemy. So how then, once you come to realize, because what God is really saying is, son, daughter, yes, you were abandoned. So he's not, not neglecting the fact that you were abandoned or that you even felt abandoned. But what he's saying is, I need you to understand that even though that was a bad season and time in your life, that that's not all I have for you. So once you know that that's not all that I have for you, uh, and even though that might not have been my plan and it happened to you, I still can use what happened to you. So now I need you to war for yourself because I need you to go in and receive the promises that I have for you. So the first thing you want to do is find strength in God no matter the season. Deuteronomy 31 to 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. God is saying, look, they might have left you on the road to death, but I picked you up even in your blood uh, from the mother's womb. I picked you up. I will not leave you and I will not.
not forsake you. Find strength in me. And when you find no, can I just be sick? Can I be real transparent? Everybody now and then, I don't care how strong you are, from the apostle to the little kid on the seat. Uh, everybody goes through a time where it feels like, I just ain't got enough strength. Well, then you know what you say? I don't have enough strength. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm going to be strong and courageous. Why? Because you said you will not leave me nor forsake me. I'm going to be able to get to my promises. Why? Because you are going with me. He said, trust that you are never alone. Romans 38 and 39 says, for I am sure that neither death or nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, no things present, no things to come, nor power, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, trust you are not alone. I don't care if they left you. Maybe it was good they left you. To be honest, some of us ought to say, Lord, thank you. Them folks left us because they was going to jack us all the way up. But yes, we had to go through the emotional part of it, but the fact that they abandoned us. Who thank you? Thank you. Because I couldn't have become who I needed to become if I'd have still been with them. I needed you to abandon me. I didn't understand it then, but I needed you to abandon me. Yes, it hurt. No, it didn't feel good. Because then I had to go through my own struggles of realizing that your abandonment didn't mean my lack of worth. I had to go through a struggle. You had to go through a struggle to realize just because they abandoned you didn't mean that God loved you less. But when you got that understanding, when you got that understanding, you was like, oh, wait, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Death, life, nothing. Angels, rulers, uh-huh. Principalities, uh-huh. Attacks, curses. Folks rejected me. Folks lying on me. Folks sending me false prophecy. Folks doing this. Folks doing that. Oh, but guess what? It don't matter. Why? Because nothing is separating me from the love of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He got out of my son. Okay, out of my son. Oh, that feel good. Uh, he said, war for yourself. Seek from, seek for your answers. Yes. Psalms 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. <laughs> See, I don't got to be afraid of somebody else abandoning me, because guess what? I keep living, somebody else probably will. Huh? Yeah. But the thing that I have learned uh, and continue to learn when I seek his answer is that he going to deliver me from the abandonment spirit. Yeah. <laughs> See, one thing the Lord said to me a long time when he said Jesus was rejected, but he didn't take on a rejected spirit. Yeah. See, I may be abandoned, but I ain't got to take on an abandoned spirit. I don't have to pick up an abandoned mindset. You don't got to pick up an abandoned mindset. You can say, no, no, no. I'm putting on the mind of Christ today because I know who I am. I know whose I am, and I know I got purpose in my life. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Whew. I don't know, y'all can tell you, maybe that, went, maybe that was a little deep for me because I'm just transparent. That was one of the mindsets I had to struggle with was that abandonment. Because I used to feel like, oh, I used to be, my goodness, I was pitiful. Can I just be, I would be like, Lord, I started speaking King James English. <laughs> Lord, why has thou forsaken me? That was my complaint. I thought because I said a King James like that that was going to make it better. The Lord said, I have not, he said, lift up your head, O ye gates. I said, wait a minute, hold on, why are you going scripture on me? He said, because I need you to open the gates and let me in so that I can change the mindset you got. You ain't abandoned. You ain't never alone if I'm with you. You are never alone if he's with you. You can be standing in the midst of wherever, but you always surrounded. You got Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and your angels. You always in the crowd no matter where you go. You coming in with your own posse. Can I tell y'all everywhere I go, I got my own posse. So it don't matter if they don't know me. I'm known with the crowd I'm coming in with. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That was good. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I, oh, that me, let, me, let me just rejoice that for a minute. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because I remember the, the, the picture with the dial. See, sometimes you feel boneless. Uh, meaning, like, she ain't got no bones in the body. The dial, she ain't got, can't move. Sometimes, spiritually, we feel boneless. Like, we just have no ability to stand. Uh, no ability to get up. But God says, I will put in you the right spirit and the right mindset. So not only can you get up, uh, but you can move. Uh, you can have movement. Uh, you can breathe. Uh, you can do what you need to do. You ain't got to stay on the ground just waiting for somebody to come over you. Amen. Thank you. Whew, all right.
right now, can we move on to the next one? Fearful mindset, fearful mindset, fearful mindset. Numbers 13, verses 31 through 33. It says, but the other man who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we travel through and explore will devour everyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and, they, and that's what they thought too. See, the fearless man says, always sees everything as too big to conquer. They see their situations as giants, and they see themselves as grasshoppers. This causes a person to be stuck, and the complaint then is about what they can't do. This is too hard. I'm not strong enough. I can't do this. I never did this before. If somebody else tell me that I never did this before, I think, Lord, okay, I'm for woo, Jesus help me. I just can't stand when people tell me, oh, I never did this before. Did you did you breathe this morning's air before before you got up? Amen. Did did you did you put your foot out of the bed this morning Amen. the way you did before you did it? No, it was the first time this morning that you put a foot out. It was the first time you walked. Uh, this was the first time I did this this morning. Every day you get up, it's a first. Amen. So if I'm telling you I ain't never did this before, if God can strengthen you to do everything else you've never done before, why can't he strengthen you to do the next thing Amen. that he called you to do? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So he says that, but that becomes our, that becomes our comfortable complaint place. Everything is a storm. If you notice the picture on for this, the fearful mindset is this storm. We make everything a storm that ain't even a storm. Yeah. We the thunder and the lightning and the <laughs> and don't know sometimes they ain't nothing but a soundtrack. Yes. You'll catch that. We looking at it like it's real. It's a soundtrack. And the soundtrack is actually in our head. And so what happens is this person's fearful mindset. Will, re will keep them from seeing themselves as victorious. You're always looking at losses and never adding up the wins. Let me just use the example I said this morning. I have found myself, I actually, last year I noticed I was starting to become fearful every time I had to start the live for church. And I was like, where is, where is that coming from? It was the thing of, oh, we're not going to be seen. This go, this, this, whatever's blocking us going to block us. And I ain't going to be able to get it released. And I just, I mean, I, half the time I was fighting to be able to worship because I was worried about that doggone video. I finally had to say, God, this is your church. If you want us to be seen, we'll be seen. If not, I ain't finna, I ain't finna trip about this no more because it ain't mad. I don't know why we being blocked. And I, I start feeling like, Lord, ain't nothing but the devil attacking us. And I'm just like, I would come over here and just say, Lord, have your way. That was it. I didn't even have to go into my tongue yet. I didn't have to do all that. I just said, Lord, have your way. This is your service. And after a while, it stopped happening. And it did done. I was like, oh, me. Oh, we, we ain't. We. See, fear makes you stay in that repetitive, wandering space because you keep repeating the same stuff in your head. Also, what happens with a person that's fearful, they tend to procrastinate. Or they'll become a perfectionist. They'll go to either one. Either it's, I, I, well, I'm supposed to do, but they just won't do. And they always got an excuse or a complaint. Well, I would have did, but I got 15 other things to do. First of all, nobody told you to do the other 15 things. Hello, somebody. Sometimes we got 15 things and we put seven on our, seven of them we put on. Maybe if you remove the seven, you could do the water. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So sometimes it's the procrastination. And then the other side of this perfectionism. Fear is like, the fear says, you must be perfect. Because then, ain't nobody going to like you. You're not going to look good. You want to make sure you show up well. So you have this mindset of being per perfect. But then what happens, a lot of times you don't do it because you don't think you're perfect enough. Either way, it could be because you've gotten it into this place of trusting in yourself. Or coming up with excuses of why it won't work also allows the mindset to hold you back. See, Fear spreads a bad report. You know what they said? They said when they start talking to the Israelites, it, they spread a bad report. So you got to be careful because that fearful mindset, it will make you be fearful and it will spread a bad report. So not it don't just stay in one area. It spreads to all areas of your life. Amen. It will start showing up in relationships. Fear of 
you know, on your job, fear at church, fear here. You just be fearful here, there, everywhere. You be like, I don't even understand because you have allowed that mindset to speak to you in every area of your life. So how does God want to change our mindset? He First of all, he said, value your time. Luke 12, 25 and 26. Can, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worries can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? See, a fearful mindset keeps us wandering over and over again through the valley of what ifs. We find ourselves taking years to accomplish something that should have taken less time because we're frozen to the rehearsed paths that we have been walking and we keep walking around that same mountain. God is saying value your time because being fearful and anxious, it ain't going to help you. It ain't going to add one moment to your life, and it's surely not going to solve your problem. So he said, if worrying don't add to your life, how is worrying going to solve the, the bigger problem? Amen. Who got to solve the bigger problem? He does. So he's like, part of that means, too, get your own self off your mind. Because part of your fear has to do, is, is that self-focus. So war for yourself. Stop looking at the problem. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. God is saying, look, we got to stop leaning on our, on our own self. Got to stop leaning on. And what does that lean mean? You know, I always love how God showed me. You know, if you lean on something, what you're leaning on has to be able to carry your weight. Right. It's got to be able to carry the weight of the thing. So if I'm leaning on my own understanding, after a while, it's just like I'm doing here. I'm going to get tired of just leaning because ain't nothing there. My understanding ain't carrying nothing. But if I lean on the Lord, he's strong. He a strong tower. So guess what? I can lean on him forever. And if I get tired of leaning that way, I can lean the other way. See, he don't get tired. I'm the one that might get tired. But I can lean on him. I can trust in him because he got some weight. He said lean on me. And then what part of the leaning is, is he's going to give us the understanding and make a path straight that we, not only was it not straight, we didn't know how to get to. Yeah. We didn't know how to get to. He said, what has your focus? Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need when you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Therefore, not, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient is the day it is Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The point is, God is saying, stop focusing on this, that, the other. And the enemy goes, yeah, focus there, let me feed that. I'm going to feed that. I'm going to water that. That's because that's what you're focusing on. I'm going to keep you focusing in those areas because that's what's going to keep you doing this. Wandering. You keep wandering. Okay, let me think about this again. I'm wandering. I don't know about you, but you, I think I got dizzy. You know, well, how many times are you going to go back to the same landmark? It ain't changed. You go back to it again, it ain't going to change. How about just move away from the landscape? Go get another scene. Because when you get another scene, you got something different to look at. He said, trust that it will work in your favor. Amen. Romans 8, 20 says, this, for we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. He said, just know. Trust that it's going to work out. Not look. What did that say? Let me, let me go back to it. Work out for good. It didn't say work out like I want it to. It didn't say work out well, I'm going to feel good about it. It didn't say work out where I'm comfortable. It just said it's going to work out for your good. So we have to be okay with letting go of saying, yeah, I might be afraid of this, but at the end of the day, I know that God is going to get me to where I need to go. I no longer have to be fearful. And can I also say some of these mindsets overlap. Sometimes fear comes because of abandonment. So you could be dealing with an abandonment and a fearful mindset. So the enemy is just working on you from every angle. So you feel abandoned, so that's why you're fearful. Because you, you didn't feel like nobody else was there for you, now you're fearful because you fearful to trust in somebody because nobody 
everybody else was there. And God is saying, I don't care if 9,900 people wasn't for you. That doesn't mean that that is your destiny and it will repeat. And Amen. if they do it again, he said, you keep doing what I told you to do because what I told you to do is going to get you to the place you need to be. The next mindset is a selfish or self-pity mindset. Now, I love this picture that I put up here. You really almost can't see the title because what do you see? What do y'all see? Me, 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 me. That's what you see. And when we sell it, that's what it's all about. Me, 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 and more me. And, and the me will cover out everything else. It will just hide everything else. Philippians 2, 4 says, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. The selfish or self-pity mindset sees themselves as victims. Now listen to this. Even when their own behavior may be resulting in some of their outcomes. Hello to the somebody. See, sometimes, you know, we, we selfish and self-pity, and, and sometimes we blame other folks, and sometimes we deal with stuff because that's, that's our, what we did it ourselves. The children of Israel wander because of their disobedience. Some reasons why individuals are wandering is because of their refusal to do personal work. They hold their past traumas and hurts around them like a badge of honor. If anyone tries to get them to move forward, they blame the person for not understanding them or for being uncaring. Like the children of Israel blame Moses for bringing them to the desert to die when actually um, Moses was only following God's instructions. The selfish mindset always sees whatever they face as worse than someone else's. Or whatever, you, you went, you, 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 you was in a car accident, well I was in a car accident and I broke my leg. You lost your job, well I lost my job and I lost my mama. We ain't in, well everything, you, 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 sometimes they just can't, you know what I'm talking about, because y'all have dealt with people like that, you be trying to tell them, and everything, they always ready to tell you how they was one step worse than you. You be like, I ain't talking to you no more. I ain't talking to you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They call, this causes, because of this, this causes this type of person to lack empathy for others because they believe their traumas was worse than anybody else's. The problem is, even if that was true, that doesn't make somebody else's trauma less important. So even if what your experience was was worse than somebody else, it does not give us the right to belittle somebody else. And as the scripture stated, the mindset makes the individual only see themselves um, as, as uh, I don't, it makes them see themselves almost kind of entitled. So you have to look to others, otherwise you kind of feel like everything is about me. The children of Israel complained about food, and then God gave them manna. They complained about this, water. They were just constantly complaining, but every time God gave them something, their complaints didn't get better. So this is what how when you have this kind of mindset, you're just really not thankful. Because you really feel like you're entitled that because I've been done so wrong, you owe me, and you might not have been the person that did nothing to, but you owe me. You, they feel entitled that people have to show up and do things for them. To be honest, that kind of person is hard. They hard, because they don't see, they, this is, uh, what's on their mind is themselves. So how then do we deal with that? Value your time. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Part of that mindset is because you're leaning on your own self. You're depending on your own self. And because you're dependent on your own self, what you also have done is you have created a different narrative than really what is probably going on. You've created this narrative that you some kind of way have been this martyr. You have put yourself up there with Jesus. I am on the cross. I have given up my life for you. You're like, um, sir, ma'am, come on down, that, that, that's not you. You ain't bad for nobody. You, you break a, toe, a nail and you're about to have a fit. So no, you, you're not dying for nobody. And so they, this, this narrative they created is part of what causes this problem. And God is saying, I, I need you to learn to trust me uh, because I need to create the right narrative in your mindset. Because once he gives you the right thing, then you can get on the right path. Amen? Amen. So we have to war for ourselves. First of all, you got to become a servant. 
I love how God normally does this. The main thing that we over here doing, he said, I'm going to put you way over to the other side. He said, so become a servant. 1 Corinthians 10, 24 says, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. In other words, I'm doing because God has told me to do. And see, the selfish man said, you got to be careful. Because the selfish man said, will do something, but then be like, uh, you see what I did for you? Hello, ma'am, can I get your attention? Can I get your attention? I want you to, can I get your attention? You see what I just did for you? You be like, um, then you did it for me. You were supposed to be doing it for him. So he says, no, we have to stop being in this place of trying to do so that we get the pat on the back. And we also need to see God's agenda. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. If you notice, that's a lot in some of the ways that God said war for ourselves. Is that part of it is we just got to get our own selves off our mind so we able to get a changed mind. Because when we start to see God's agenda and realize that, okay, I can't do this because it's going to make me feel good. See, that's sometimes people, people even go into ministry like I'm going to do this not because God sent me because I'm going to feel good. I'm going to get a platform that's going to make my haters realize I'm important. Uh, wrong reason. That's your abandonment talking. That's your rejection talking. That's your something else talking. But the, the, the servant heart, the mind of Christ says, I'm going to do it simply because my father told me to do it. Because guess what? There'll be times you might be the only one talking. I could be here talking to the walls and ain't nobody listening, but you got to keep on talking. God may say, it, it, it don't work the way you think. You ain't going to have no great following. Uh, you may not have a great, but you do it anyway because you got your, man, I told you because where you go, you never by yourself. You got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in your angels. You always got to possibly wherever you go. So it's just me and my posse. I'm going to sit down like, hey, thank you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and my angels. They're right there on the front row. Thank you for coming and joining me today. Amen. Amen. Then this last mindset, last mindset, last mindset is the, um, um, oh, did I get the last scripture? Get you off your mind. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds his back. See, part of this thing uh, of a self-pity is we always like, oh, why God is, you got, I need people to know how wrong I've been doing. See, these are the folks that will run around and tell everybody their version of a story because they need to grade that gather some pity. They need people to pity. Oh, you were done so wrong. Now, if they told you the truth, you'd be like, get out of here. You should have did what they did to you because you was wrong. See, self-pity, it doesn't make sure, it doesn't matter what the narrative of the story is. It's always going to be leaning where they are the victim. All right, the last one is the self-righteous um, mindset. Romans 10 and 3, has this been good? Yes, yes. Self-righteous, Romans 10 and 3 says, For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. See, a self-righteous person, at the end of the day, they have, if you notice the picture says, my righteousness, my rules rather. See, you don't even care. I, I have made my own rules. This is also part of when you hear people talk about a religious spirit, that also kind of comes into play of this, of this self-righteous mindset. Because this person always sees themselves right. You know, it always, not sometimes, always, all caps, always right. They see errors in others they refuse or can't see in themselves. This, uh, th this mindset can be very dangerous, for, specifically in any of us, but in a prophet. How it shows up in a prophet is you actually are hearing from your flesh. The voice may mimic and, and sound like the spirit, but it's your flesh that you are actually speaking from. Because this self-righteousness will have you re rebuking folks, reprimanding folks, being critical of others based on your rules, your beliefs, or your feelings. Yet, yet, this, I'm reading because this is what the Lord said, yet they can be in sin or unsubmitted to biblical truth themselves. So I, the Lord sent me to rebuke you, I'm an, uh, and I'm adulterous. How, how are you going to send me to rebuke you about being holy and I ain't holy? He ain't going to do that. That ain't what he do. He going to send his vessels that are submitted to him. He said the truth is this, this mindset actually is a person who lacks confidence. 
And because it, it, most of the time, if you look in their past, these are people that have either been disrespected, they felt vulnerable, people didn't um, acknowledge them or support them in things, and so they have that self-righteousness that builds up in them to make them feel like what well, they was wrong, you right. And everybody wrong, I'm the only one right. And you be careful because then you done created your own, re own religion. That's where cults come from, their self-righteous uh, mindset. That's what the Lord said. He said because they, they disagree with what's truth and because somebody didn't honor them the way they felt, then they come up with their own stuff. This person was generally fighting to be heard or accepted. So this mindset creates the person as the authority about a thing. This person complaining is always about how bad a job somebody else is doing. They don't like the music in the church. Oh, they, you know, that Jocelyn sang today. I'm sick of them kind of songs. You know, that ain't what she's supposed to be doing. Okay, well, what's she supposed to be doing? That ain't, that ain't my job. I'm just supposed to complain about it. I just know that ain't that, that the Lord ain't in that. That ain't what he want. She had on gym shoes. That Lord ain't in that. I just don't believe. But you got on gym shoes, but I ain't in the pulpit. The church, they, they don't like the sermon. Why are y'all always preaching from that same scripture? We actually have somebody tell us that. Why you preach that scripture? Because it's the Bible. I can preach it. If I, if I come up here for the next year and preach the same scripture, I'm going to do it because that's what the Lord said. Uh, and, 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 I, you going to come preach? I, I, I don't want to preach nothing. But then how you going to critique me? You don't even understand the assignment and you ain't willing to do it. They don't like their co-workers on the job. You know what I was, Man, they always, they, they fault finders. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I don't like that coworker. Why you don't like her? Because she always smiling. And I know there's something behind that. I feel it in my spirit. But she just really is underhanded. She just be trying to smile and make us believe that's really who she is. That's who she is, y'all, because she just likes to smile. She probably smiling at you because she don't want to slap the taste out your mouth. So maybe that's why she's smiling. <laughs> Somebody said amen on that one. <laughs> They are fault, this is the thing the God says self-righteous people are. They are fault finders, never solutionists. Amen. Never solutionists. If they give you something and tell you you are like I could come and say, oh, you're doing all this wrong. Okay, well then what am I supposed to do? I don't know, you gotta take that to the Lord. He no, he so he can tell you everything you did wrong, but he couldn't tell you how to make it right. I don't, I don't think he could do that. If if he told you, if he told you something was wrong, can he tell you what how to do it right? I just believe that's how God is, because God is a solutionist. Amen. He ain't going to have me correct you. Like, even if I need to say, okay, you know, maybe try this with this. But he's going to do it in love. I ain't going to come beat you over the head. I just didn't like what you did. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So this is that self-righteous. And it shows, and that's another one that's a hard one, because you already believe you right. No matter what nobody tell you, you believe you're right. This is that spirit and mindset. Now, this is the one God says you got to water hardest against. Because since you really don't like to listen to people, this is the one a lot of times folks have to go real low. God has to let them go real low. And when they kind of having that uh, prodigal son moment, they groveling, then it's like, ooh, oh, I wasn't right. I need to get up and go back to my daddy. Uh-huh. But God says once he can change that self-righteous spirit, who he said then a person, when they can see, he said then they'll be all right. But he said, but you got to be careful because that's one that's hard. So value your time. Matthew 7, verse 1 through 5 says, judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eyes, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And maybe when you take the, the log out of your eye, maybe it really wasn't no speck in your brother's eye, no way. It was just because that was how you were seeing. You were seeing through a faulty eye. Um, you know, sometimes God is saying we got to value our time and we got to judge rightly. I, I love the way the Lord told me about the thing. He says sometimes, and I, I think this applies to that self-righteous. See, a self-righteous person is like the person that's digging the pit or the ditch for somebody else. But you know what the Lord said? In the natural, if I was standing here and, and somebody was standing here, and if I'm digging the dirt, what's happening to the person digging the dirt? You're going lower. 
Why are you going lower? Because you dig in this hole and you got to go into the hole that you dig in. Now the person you dig in it for, they still standing on solid ground. What else happens when you dig in the dirt? There's no way you can dig dirt and not get the dirt on yourself. So you think you're going to put this person in a pit because you're so self-righteous. God said with your self-righteous foolish self, you actually dig in a pit for your own self because you're going to end up burying your own self. Why? Because your self-righteousness made you judge and jewelry when you're not even seeing the fact that you got your own mess that needs to be cleaned up. Amen. God is saying we got to determine with him so we not finding ourselves complaining like the uh, the, the Israelites. Like they complain, complain, complain as though they were the leader. They ain't led nobody nowhere. They was just a bunch of loud sheep. Biting sheep, that's what they were. They got, every time Moses says on their heads, a biting remark. And so God is saying, no, it's time for us to see ourselves. So how do you walk for yourself? You walk in humility. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not by your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. God is saying part of how a person with that self-righteous mindset it gets, gets uh, wars for themselves is you really just begin to humble yourself. Come to the Lord and say, Lord, teach me. I don't understand. Teach me. Help me to see. Help me to deal with those things that have been trauma in my life that have put me as the authority and help me to kick my own self off the seat of the authority. See God righteousness. Romans 10 and 3 says, For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. See, when we do not listen, when we do not heed, we establish what we consider our own rules. We make our own rules. We make it up as we go along. You see it all the time. I, I hear so many folks on Facebook going, I'm a prophet. I don't have to belong to a church. I don't need no covering. I don't need no overseeing. Um, tell me where that is in the Bible. Give me the chapter and verse on that one. Because that thing I read about scripture, the prophet, first of all, let me help you out real quick. The prophet is supposed to be the mouthpiece for God. Amen. God said he established his church to be part of where the mouthpiece needs to be. Now, I'm not saying God don't send you out into the world, but you got to have some accountability. Because how you know you saying what's right if there's no accountability? So you just can't be out there wandering, I ain't got nobody, ain't nobody checking me, I can do whatever I want, I can say whatever I want to say. And if you ever notice those, the, the self, uh, I don't know what I want to call them, but the, the rogue prophets out there, if you always notice, most of their messages are, are, are you're going to hell. There's never any encouragement. It's always this, y'all ain't living right. Y'all ain't doing this. That's why. Because they have created their own rule. It's always, you not doing. You not good enough. You going to hell. You better listen to my message. Like, is it your message or God's message? I'm going to listen to the Lord's message. So we have to be careful. And then finally, release lordship over your life. Titus 3 and 5 says, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of re regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. See, our minds are changed, not just this one, it was the last one in terms of this self-righteousness, but this is true, to be honest, for all of us. We have to come to that place and then say, Lord, if I want to have a changed mindset, the way that I'm going to have to do it is I need to change, remove improve what I'm thinking, but I do it by putting on the mind of Christ. Amen. I have to think like Christ. What did Christ do? He sacrificed himself. He gave himself. He loved. He prayed. He did the Father's bidding. We have to put on the mind of Christ if we want to see our lives advance, if we want to see ourselves going into the next that God has for us. And we got to do it quick. Can I tell somebody something? This is a quick move that God is saying. God has been talking to us for the last year about doing what he's called us to do. He is, it's almost like I feel like him saying, the time is now. I'm not giving you, there's no more excuse for being slothful, no more excuse for being slow. He said, if I told you to do something, I need you to get in position. Why do you need to be in position? Because he said, I'm only advancing those that are standing where I told them to stay. Amen. See, we're looking for God to do over here. If God told you to be here, you better be in a position he told you to be, because that's where he's going to show up. You're suddenly going to show up where he told you to meet him at. Your suddenly is going to show up where he told you to stay. He told them to stand and see the 
salvation of the Lord and they stood when he told them to stand and they was able to see the salvation of the Lord. They didn't go back in the tent. They didn't go back this way. See, you going backwards and you missing the salvation. You going backwards or you staying in positions that God don't want you in and you missing what God is showing up and doing. God is saying, I'm advancing in this season, but I'm only advancing those that are standing in position. Stop making excuses. I understand that you went through all the things you went through. He said, but you didn't go through them by yourself. Because even if you didn't know me at the time, it was still me keeping you safe. The fact that you're here. Everybody take a breath. You know what that means? You still here. That means God woke you up this morning. You breathing. God said, I still got purpose for you. You was breathing even through the things that was horrible. Why? Because God was trying to remind you, I'm still the breath of life. I'm still breathing in you. I still got purpose for you. I'm still taking you somewhere. I'm still doing something with you. So don't let the enemy's lies keep you in a place where you're not moving forward. Don't let the enemy's lies keep you in a place where you're missing out. I'm not missing out. Who going with me? Who going with me? Who going with me? I'm not missing out. I'm not missing out. I'm not missing out. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father God, we say thank you. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, God, I feel you, I feel you, I thank you. God, I thank you today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, you're changing or shifting us. Uh, and I can say this, it don't always feel good. Who likes to go into surgery? I don't know too many people that jump for joy to go in surgery, but they're happy after they heal from the surgery. Amen. God, I'm thanking you for the surgeon. I'm thanking you, God, right now, uh, that you say you're not leaving our hearts and minds uh, unchanged. Uh, why you got to deal with our minds? Mindset. God, you said because that's where the enemy starts. The battle starts in the mind. Uh, then it moves. Because if he can get us to believe a thing, think a thing, we'll begin to interact in that thing. Once we begin to interact with that thing, we'll begin to walk it out. Oh God, but today we're not walking out no more of the deception. No more of the trauma. No more of the lies. We're going to war for it. We're going to take it by force. We're going to fight for it. We're not going to give up. We're going to press in, press in, press in. And press in. We're going to move forward. We're going to keep doing what you called us to do. We're going to shout. We're going to dance. We're going to do what is necessary. We're not just going to win. We're we just going to praise to an answer. But sometimes I might just got to praise at least to get enough strength so I can go into the war. Amen. Sometimes I got to dance a little bit so I can get enough strength enough just to say, okay, Lord, I got enough strength now. I can get a step in. I got enough strength now, God. I can go on and get in. I got enough strength now, Lord. God. I can go into the prayer. I got enough strength now, Lord. I can start to seek you. I got enough strength because in my praising, I wasn't just praising, but I was getting a download from heaven. And as I was getting a download from heaven, you began to talk to me. You began to remind me, uh, daughter, uh, son, uh, think about the good things of the Lord. Uh, count your blessings one by one. Number them. Remind yourself. Don't look at what they can't do. Don't look at what you ain't got. Look at what I'm doing for you. Look at what I've carried you. And I, even when I didn't have it, Jesus. Even when you didn't have, God said you had me. So you never were without. Take it out of my Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah, that my Sunday. Oh, no, 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 my Yakananes Yander was he. He can never love us so. He can never love us. Oh, Rebbe Yander was he. Oh, Kandar of a Sunday, the love of Sue. Oh, she ha. Ah, he. Oh, my God, my God. Woo. Ha. Oh, I can feel the weightiness of the Lord in this place. Oh, Jesus, 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 thank you. God, I thank you for the shift. I thank you, Father, that you're doing a new thing in us. I thank you, Father, that you're breaking off some things. I thank you, Lord God, today that you're dealing with the fearful mindset. Uh, no longer will we be afraid. We'll be courageous. I see like in the spirit, God has got many of you roaring. It's like I see a roar. Uh, no more meow. Ha! He said, but a roar coming forth from you in the name of Jesus. I can have a so. Father, oh, you kids. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 God says, 
No more of the walking around again and again and again. Sometimes we keep reliving the same problems. That, that's the difference between reliving them and praying for them. I can pray until I see a thing break, but I don't have to relieve the emotions of it. I don't have to relive the doubt of it. I don't have to relieve, you don't have to relive the fear of it. God says, take the situation to him. You pray for it, but when you release it, don't go away in your mindset as though it's not been dealt with. You go away in your mindset that God got it. Go away in your mindset that my Father is taking care of me. Go away in your mindset saying, and Father, I am not alone for you have not forsaken me. Your promise is that you are with me. You are holding me up in your righteous right hand. You will not drop me. In this season, you will not be dropped. God says some of y'all need to hear that. You will not be dropped. God's hand is sufficient to hold on to you. God's hand is sufficient to carry you. Oh my God, thank you. God says, I'm carrying you, son. I'm carrying you, daughter. I will make sure that you will reach the places and the situation and the destiny that I have for you. I will ensure your safe passage. God said, many of you have safe passage. Uh, just like the they, they led the slaves and they had the underground. God said, I got some underground territory, some underground railroads, if you will. I got some underground passages that you will get to freedom that the enemy don't even know about. He said, I'm taking you in to the place of freedom. I'm taking you in to the place of release. I'm taking you in where you are able to see and to move. He said, I'm taking you higher. He said, I'm bringing you higher up in the mountain where I am. I'm bringing you higher into my presence. I can't get over so. Ah. Ah, he can handle us so far as we see. Yet in a man, dolo sembara seken dolo bosu. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the healing in this place, God. Woo! Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. We say thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Ooh, get it on my soul. Ooh, get it on my soul.